appreciate everybody's patience and keeping decorum. Thank you. A favorite topic of mine, Homeland Security. Since 9-11, Long Beach Port Security funding has increased from approximately $259 million a year in 2001 to about $1.6 billion a year in 2005. Do you find that those funds, Congressman, we'll start with you, do you find that those funds are being allocated efficiently? And in your opinion, are the current precautions and mandates enough to protect American citizens? Congressman, four minutes, please. Well, first and foremost, uh, what we do to uh, protect us from a terrorist attack uh, is, not, is not starting and ending with what we do at the port. And what we do overseas has a tremendous impact on our security here at home. The best security that we can have for our courts is to make sure that we are taking terrorists out overseas as they plot to do something here. Quiet, everyone. Quiet. The only thing I would ask is when people interrupt me is that that comes off of their we time. We will add time. additional time. That's right. Thank you very much. So, uh, so that is an important item, and I believe that we are do, trying to do that, our, our, that our federal government has a commitment to do that. Whether or not there have been mistakes made, whether or not we can be more efficient, obviously mistakes are made in every conflict, and things can be done more efficiently, whatever you're trying to, to, to look at and examine. But that strategy is, and is the all-important strategy. In terms of the money that was given directly to the ports, I'm very proud that my office has, again, been proactive in, this, in the issue of our security and our safety. Uh, number one, I have been, of course, supporting the efforts that I just talked about overseas and have been very involved in them in my position in the House of Representatives of the International Relations Committee. But here at home, my office, we have a full-time staff member who is a specialist in chemical and biological weapons and uh, has trained over 6,000 first responders here from our local area. Policemen, firemen, healthcare workers, local officials, all the way up and down the line. People who would be involved if there ever was a chemical biological attack or a nuclear attack or um, just a regular uh, earthquake or a natural catastrophe. No other office, no other congressional office has taken the initiative and I'm very proud that if there is a crisis that we will have prepared and our office has played an important role in being prepared for that and many lives will be saved. In terms of what's actually going down in the port, I have two members of my staff who are constantly and, and, and intricately involved in, in the efforts to organize port security. One of them is in the back, Fatty Ishmael, could you raise your hand, Fatty? Uh, and uh, he goes to all the meetings along with Kathleen Hollingsworth, my, my director. They are part of the decision-making process. We are doing our best to make sure that money is spent wisely. Can we spend it better? Yeah, obviously, there's always a better way to do something, but people are doing their very best job and, and trying their best. Now, we don't get, to, in the end, uh, obviously, you know, miss things, and we're trying not to miss things. And I think that those people who are working at security at our ports and all of these different congressional and, and legislative offices, we all are trying to do our very best to protect you. And uh, of course, I'm very involved, as I say, with what I do believe is the essential uh, ingredient to port and every other kind of security, and that is to making sure that we are proactive overseas and finding those people who hate our way of life, people who declare that, well, I guess, I guess nobody hates our way of life overseas, I'm sorry. I guess, uh, you know, the, look, the Japanese were the first and the, and, the, and the Nazis hated our way of life. The communists hated our way of life. Radical Islam hates our way of life. They hate America. And they will hurt us. And if we do the right thing, they will hurt us. And it's our job to take out those people who would hurt the destroy America. Well, first of all, since my opponent is on that committee and, d and did all this investigation and everything, I would have thought that he'd at least know what the dollar amounts are. It isn't 1.6 billion for Long Beach Port or LA, it's 24 million. That's 1.6 billion is for all the ports combined. 
And, and what we get now is half of what we got in 2005. We got 12 million this year, 24 million last year. And the whole thing is a sham the way it works. And uh, Congresswoman Harmon tried to introduce legislation to change it. But the idea is that the people that get the grants are the ones that write the best reports or know the right members of Congress or whatever to get the allocation. Right? And I'm not wrong about that. We all know. So we, do we really want to trust our homeland security to somebody that writes good grants for universities? That's the way that it gets done? No. And the grants are only for one year at a time. What kind of planning can you have? When we talk about having the talented people, I've gone over there and inspected the ports. I worked with the customs people and the, uh, and, and the, uh, and the drug people and so forth and saw what they go through and, and with the budgets that they're requesting. And when you give them a budget one year at a time, not only can they not do any planning, how do you hire these professionals when you only have a commitment for a year at a time? It's outrageous. And our whole, our worst nightmare is that one of these containers has a dirty bomb in it and it goes off in the middle of the harbor. You know, how serious is that? We talk about the money, we talk about the money in 24 million last year. We spend, you know, we spend two billion a week on the war in Iraq, and that's supposed to be for, to protect us. Why wouldn't we inspect these containers at the origin before they get here and have those seals put on them and get and, and get them over here? And if we have to put a container seal on them. these budget slashing homeland security people when we need to focus here you know you keep talking about you don't want terrorist actions here well let's put the money forward and let's make sure it doesn't happen here you know not just the courts but the first responders the Coast Guard talk to all of them they're all underfunded you know and what's more important than that what else makes a difference if, if, if a bomb goes off or, 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 or some kind of biological weapon here we need to do whatever it takes to get it done. And we don't need to depend on one-year grants written by somebody who knows a congressman. That's not what we need. So what I'm talking about is we better, we better show some federal leadership here. And all the hearings that I've attended, I haven't seen any federal, uh, any federal presence there at all. I see Janice Hahn, the city councilwoman. I see Betty Carnett, the, um, the assemblywoman. I see Alan Lowenthal, the state senator, but I don't see any federal people. And the last, the last forum that I went to, they allowed the public to get up and speak on the mic. And I listened to them for three hours. Now, we're talking about ports where 40% where of all of our goods that come into the United States go through those two ports. Now, how in the world can their security not be a federal problem? And we should have somebody from the congressman's office at those meetings. Congressman, one minute rebuttal, Just for the please. record, my office is more active than any other congressional office in the country in both portions. And they were at all of those meetings. And if you're, if you're suggesting otherwise, you, you have not been to those meetings. Uh, let me suggest this. I would, uh, I, I would certainly agree that uh, more money should be directed locally, and I, as uh, Jim knows, and he's supporting this concept as well, I have been pushing, and it is my concept, and I have been the one, the author of the bill, to try to make sure that instead of taxing the American people and our business community uh, to, to provide money for the ports that will be channeled to them through the federal government, I believe in a container fee so that those businessmen who create businesses in China, they can pay for the, the containers that come through and let them pay for the security, and that money should go directly to the port and let them decide. I've been in the forefront of that, and let me note that Jane Harmon has been on the other side of that, and, uh, and, and that's the best approach to take, and I know you support that approach. Thank you, Congressman. One minute rebuttal for you, Mr. Brown. Yes, you're right. I sure do support that concept. I told you that earlier today, that I do support the container fee. But what I don't support is a congressman that's been in there for 18 years and doesn't get it done. That was two terms ago.
terms ago. You didn't even get Republican support on that bill. I support you tonight, but not the other people. So I'm saying we need somebody in there with some leadership that will get something done. Whether it's on immigration, you haven't gotten anything done there either. But I think you've talked a lot, and, I, and, and you have used that on every single line, but I don't see any legislation passed, and I don't see you getting a whole bunch of other people on board from your own party to support these views. You don't even get the president to support you. <laughs> You've got a, president, a Republican president, a Republican Senate, and a House, and I'm out of time. Thank you.